In this tutorial, we're going to create an invoice total. To do this, we're going to create a couple of queries. Once they've been created, we're going to create a macro so that we can run each query one after the other. And once our macro has been created, we're going to create a button on a form to run the macro. So to start with, I need to create a query. In order to perform the calculation, I'm going to need information from my invoice table, from my invoice product table, and from my product table. And it's going to be an update query. The field that I want to update is the invoice total, and I already have a field in my invoice table for invoice grand total, so that is the one that I want to update. To start with, I'm not going to have any criteria, but I am going to have an, a value in my update to section. So what I want to do is I want to update it first of all to its current value, which seems a bit strange. And then I want to add on the quantity multiplied by the unit price. If I have a look in my product table, I have selling price. When I type the field names into the update section, I need to make sure that they match the fields that exist in each table. When this runs, what it should do is it should update every transaction that takes place. So in any particular invoice, I may have a number of transactions, and this will run one after the other. So I'm going to save it, save it with a reasonable name, and then I'm going to run my query. Now when I run, I get a message. It says I'm about to update five rows, which is what I would expect. So I'm going to click yes. The next sensible thing to do is to have a look at my invoice table. To start with, all my invoice totals were zero, and now they have been updated. If, however, I now run my update query again, again it says I'm going to update five rows. And this time, when I select my invoice table, you'll see that every value in my invoice table has doubled. If I run it again, and click on my invoice table, again you'll see that the values have increased, so they're now three times their original value. The reason this happens is because every time I run the query, it accumulates those values. If I go back to the design of my query, I'll see that really this is what I've asked it to do in the criteria. It's invoice grand total plus quantity time selling price. If I don't include the invoice grand total, then it will reset the grand total to quantity time selling price. And that means in a particular invoice where I have multiple transactions, only the last transaction will actually count. It will overwrite every other value. What I need to do to get around this slight problem is introduce another query. And the query that I want to introduce is a very simple query. What I'm going to do is I'm going to update the invoice total to zero and then I'll run my invoice grand total query. So I'm going for query design and this time I just need my invoice table. Again it's going to be an update. Again it's going to use the invoice grand total but this time I want to update it to zero. And I'm going to save this as query update invoice to zero. The idea of these queries is that I run them one after the other. So in this case, I'm about to update four rows, and then I'll check my invoice table. All of my totals are zero, and now if I run my subtotal, it 
it's updating five rows. And if I go back to my invoice, I'll see that the rows have been updated. These will work as long as every time I want to calculate an invoice total, I first set the invoice total to zero. The best way to do this is to create a macro. So I'm going to create my macro. Now a macro is a series of events that occur one after the other. The first event that I would like is I would like the event to open query. Now really I want to run the query rather than open it, but it says open query. And the query that I would like to open, first of all, is update invoice to zero. Then I'm going to add another action straight after it, which again is open query. And this time the query is update invoice subtotal. I'm now going to save that as MCR update invoice total. And now, hopefully, when I run my macro, it will attempt to update four records, first of all. And those four rows are the four invoices that exist. Then it will ask about updating five rows. And the five rows are each of the five transactions that exist. And if I check my invoice, then the correct grand total has appeared on each. The last thing that I would like to do is I would like to assign that to a button so that it runs automatically. So I'm going to go to my invoice form and I'm going to add on a button. And the wizard appears automatically. And what I would like to do is a miscellaneous task which is to run macro. And the macro that I would like to run is the macro update invoice total. Now I have various options of what I'd like to do on there. Now what I'm going to say is I'm going to put some text on the button and the text that I'm going to put is OK. It's not very meaningful, but if I'm designing a system for novice users, then it's not very threatening either. So I have an OK button. And now if I go back to the normal view, I should be able to hit OK. It gives me the first message, four rows, the second message for five rows, and my total is intact. If I now create a new invoice, I'm going to choose an employee, and I'm going to choose a customer, and then my products. I'll have two products with their respective quantities. So 60 of those. Um, and then when I hit OK, this time I have five rows and seven rows. And my total has been updated automatically. The only thing now that is troubling in terms of the operation of it is the error messages. Ideally, we don't want to remove error messages or warning messages as they are because they are warning us that we're about to update the information in the tables. However, in this case, I'm confident that my system works. So I'm going to go back to my macro. I'm going to modify my macro by adding in some new actions. And the actions that I want are, first of all, I would like to set warnings. Now you might find that the option to set warnings isn't available. I'd like to turn the warnings off and there's no option to do that. So I'm going to go to show all actions and try set warnings. My set warnings is no and then I'm going to add on the action to set warnings and this time it's yes. Now this first action I need to put up to the top of my macro. 
Now that means that when I run my macro, it will automatically run the queries, but it will hide all of those error messages. And at the end, it will then show all the error messages again, in case anything is about to go wrong in the system. Now if I go back to my form, again I'm going to add on a new record. So I'm going to select my employee, I'm going to select a customer, and then I'm going to choose some products. So this time we'll have four of these. And we'll have 12 of these. We hit OK. We get no error messages, no warning messages, but the invoice grand total has been updated automatically.